Hello everyone, welcome back to another tipping video on the channel. Going to be going over my round one tips in this video today. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy. And let's kick off with my tips from last week. Rightio, so my tips from round zero. I managed to get myself a three out of four. I'll definitely take that to kick off the season. A positive record is always a good way to kick off your year with tipping. Uh, the first game, backed in my Swannies. I was just bullish. I was just really, really confident heading into this game. Home field advantage. Uh, you know, just a massive build-up and atmosphere. I just felt like we'd come out to play. Um, and I backed in the likes of Heaney. And we had plenty of those midfield plays that could run through there and give Melbourne's midfield a run for their money. Um, and yeah, they got a really, really strong win in the end. Terrific second half. Well, this was the tip that stitched up a lot of people. 91%, I'm pretty sure at the time, did tip Brisbane. But yeah, fair play if you did get that Carlton tip right. I just felt it would be a bridge too far with the outs I had. But what a comeback. A comeback for the ages. Harry Mackay, Kerno. Uh, the midfield really, really lifted as the second half grew on. It was a terrific win. Backed in the Suns over the Tigers. A convincing win for them in the end. And their midfield really did a number on the Tigers midfield. And the final tip, I did go with GWS. Again, the home field advantage playing its part but I just felt their forward half um, would be able to you know take advantage of the outs of the Collingwood defense like uh, Jeremy Howe and also Murphy and uh, yeah really really convincing win not many people were expecting a performance like that and we'll have a quick look at the tipping competition want to bring back the updates in the tipping comp if you're yet to join feel free to it's absolutely free to join First link in the description, but as you can see here, a number of people got correct tips, and considering we have about 500 people in the tipping comp, and we only have around 10 people of two letter Peter, Rockstar, Luke Day, Ebag, Jay Briz, Carlton, Blake, Willana, Lockie, the men, OG, and HMM. So 11 people, a very small amount of people getting every single tip right again because of that Brisbane game. So they applied all these lot, but getting all the tips correct in the opening round. So now let's get into my tips for round one. We kick off with the Thursday night game. Richmond playing the Carlton Football Club at the MCG. The season opener that we always are familiar with, but isn't anymore. But for sure, we'll still get a lot of hype. Uh, but yeah, heading into this game, right off the bat, I think Richmond will bounce back. Very disappointing last week. Their midfield was just completely outdone by a strong Gold Coast outfit. Um, and I think with Dustin Martin back in the team, that will certainly help them uh, add more grunt into that midfield. As for the Blues, I'll for sure be heading into this game with a chock full of confidence. It was a remarkable comeback win against the Brisbane Lions last week. Week, just how they turned that game around. Their forward half pressure really, really started to force a lot of mistakes from that brute from those Brisbane defenders. They got on top of the midfield and their turnover game was very good too. And they were dominant in the air. Colonel Mackay taking those important marks. And I feel like against a Richmond defense that was quite shaky last week, Mackay and Kerno for sure could be licking their lips. So for me, Richmond will be playing a better brand of football, I think. I, I reckon they'll show more of a better four-quarter effort in terms of intent. Intensity. Uh, but yeah, just their efficiency. I don't know how they'll go in their forward half. And I just think Carlton, with a confident win last week, I reckon that they will be knocking off the Tigers here. So maybe Richmond could be leading for a quarter or two, but the Blues to be too good. And they'll win this one by 19 points. Next game up, we've got the Pies hosting the Swannies at the MCG. Probably one of the games of the round on paper. Two good looking sides for 2024. Collingwood, very disappointing last week. Just felt they were really soft around the contest, especially as the game grew on. Didn't really get enough of a collective effort from their midfield. Their defense was pretty shaky as well and not really physical, and they just allowed those Giants players to get uncontested possessions in their forward 50. And alongside going inside 50, their general ball movement was just very sloppy and uncharacteristic. So I think Heading into this game, they should be bouncing back and playing a lot better football, especially with their flag unveiling in front of a big packed crowd that, uh, that, of course, the Pies always play very well in front of their home crowd. From a Swans perspective, they do still have those midfield outs, and I think when you look at it from a tipping perspective and a preview perspective, that does make you go against them a bit. But with the outs they had and against a full-strength Melbourne midfield, they were terrific in that second half. So why can't they do it to a Collingwood midfield? For me, they're a very good chance to win that midfield battle, which will be critical in this game. Might be a little bit of bias coming from a Swan supporter, but I generally think we can win this game if we can show great composure in our back six like we did against Melbourne last week. And that's how you need to defend, especially against a high octane and just a very dangerous Collingwood forward half that can play some great football. If they can do what the Giants did, expose their back half and defend well as a 
back six. I think the Swans can, yeah, really win this game. But for me, Collingwood, just back at home, I just can't see him playing two bad games in a row. I reckon they will, yeah, really lift, especially with their flag unveiling, like I said earlier. And, uh, yeah, in a cagey affair, the Pies, the home crowd will really get it behind them, uh, and they'll play some much better and more efficient football. So Collingwood win a close one here. Really could go other way. Could have a lot of lead changes, but for me, the Pies will be too good in the end, and they'll win a close one by 12 points. Now for the Saturday games, first one up, we've got Essendon taking on Hawthorne at the MCG once again. Now, both teams looked pretty good, I guess you could say, in their pre-season hitouts. Essendon, I thought, had some great moments against the Cats at the Cattery. And as for Hawthorne, well, from what we were able to see with their forward half and their midfield, they can damage really any team like a Western Bulldogs. The issue, though, is just their defence with James Blank out. They will probably have phases throughout games this year where they could just really just uh, slip off and have a bunch of goals conceded against them. And with an Essendon forward half, that just looks really dangerous. I'm bullish on the Bombers this year with the likes of Kyle Langford, who I think will continue to really continue the output of goals. Peter Wright's fantastic in the air. Uh, Jake Stringer, can he get back to his best? The Bombers are probably more the team you can trust with tipping this game. Midfield battle definitely will be interesting. Hawthorne were up there for clearances last year. I'm pretty sure they were a top four clearance side. So Newcomb, Warple, those sort of types. If they can get on top and with the four, half talent they've got. Jack Gitterin, Mitch Lewis, all those types. I think they can really push Essendon here. They're without Jordan Ridley too, so Ben McKay will need to be big. Uh, but for a, when I look at it from a four-quarter perspective, I just see Essendon outrunning Hawthorne here. And it's only in the first round, so we've got to see these two teams play. So the Bombers get the win for me. I'm bullish on them, and they'll win this one by 25 points. Next game up, we've got GWS hosting another home game here against North Melbourne. The Giants were fantastic in their win over Collingwood last week. For people that have them as flag favourites, you're going to be pretty confident from what you did see. Defended tremendously well as a back six. Forward half efficiency was great, and just picking apart their targets as well inside 50 was very strong too. North Melbourne will definitely want to be kicking off their season well against the GWS side. Will they get the win? Most likely not, uh, but definitely they could try and beat up the Giants around the midfield. Their midfield does look quite strong with the likes of LVU and George Wardlaw. So if they can really get to work, hey, maybe they could uh, give that Giants midfield a run for their money. You never know. They could start off the game quite well. But for me, with GWS, with all their firepower and off the back of knocking off Collingwood like that last week, I can't see them head into this game and lose to a North Melbourne side who defensively could be in a bit of trouble if the GWS forward half get clicking again. So for me, the Giants win well with this game and they'll be far too good for North Melbourne in the end and they'll win this one at home by 52 points. First Saturday night game, we have the Cats host the Saints at GMHBA Stadium. This one will be interesting for sure because you've got a side of St. Kilda. We're probably heading into this year more highly rated than the Cats, but you can never write off Geelong. I, for myself, have them in the top eight this year, and they are going to be a side, again, you feel like are going to be pretty strong at home. And the Saints haven't won at Cadenia Park since 1999, so that sort of um, you know, venue factor of tipping does fall out of their favour. I'm very excited to see how the Saints will start off their season. One of the top defences from last year. So if they can shut down that really, really just efficient Geelong forward half. One of the most efficient forward lines last year. And if they don't allow them to score and get on top of the questionable midfield and defence for the Cats, I feel, heading into this year. I can definitely see the Saints take home the chocolates. Max King needs to be strong in the air. Their forward half pressure was good in their wins last year. Uh, but for me, Geelong, with the forward half talent they've got and... It's at Geelong. I just can't go past the Cats. And also, we're yet to see these two sides play. We haven't seen much data. So I'm going to be going the safe option here with Geelong. But I reckon the Saints will come to play. And this one will be a cagey affair. But Geelong run it out in the end in the fourth term against a gallant St. Kilda outfit by 13 points. For the other Saturday night game, we've got the Suns hosting the Adelaide Crows. Two highly rated teams heading into 2024. Gold Coast kicked off their 2024 campaign with a great win over Richmond. Uh, just completely outdid them in the midfield and going inside 50. Really strong of the year and competed well at ground level for the most part. Uh, but it's going to be a much tougher test for Gold Coast, I think, this week. Adelaide, one of the top pressure sites from last year. The intensity they bring around the football was is always very, very good week in, week out. How will they play away from home, though? That's the question I will ask for Adelaide. For the most part, last week, defensively, Gold Coast did look quite sound, but during that third term when Richmond were getting a lot more inside 50 entries, 
I didn't really like too much on how easily they were able to give up goals. So again, it's going to be a tough test because Adelaide were one of the most efficient forward lines last year. They were without Phil Thorpe, but they've still got Taylor Walker, who I think will be again elite this year. So when I think it from that way, and it's going to be a much difficult task in terms of a much tougher opposition that will come to play, um, especially around the coal face. When you eliminate, I think, the midfield powers from Gold Coast, they can be beatable. So I'm going to be going against the grain here. I know Adelaide have yet to be a proven side away from home, but you've always got to go with upset tips, especially in the first round. So I'm going to be going with Adelaide in this game. I think they can get up against a pretty tough looking Gold Coast outfit away from home and kick off their season 1-0. and So the Rose to win a tight one by eight points. For the Sunday games now, we have Melbourne hosting the Western Bulldogs at the MCG. Melbourne very disappointing last week. The same old issues from last year. Going inside 50, very poor. Didn't cut the angles and just bombing it in long. Didn't really help them, especially with those conditions against Sydney. For the Bulldogs, they'll for sure want to be getting on top of the midfield battle. What the Swans were able to do to a full-strength Melbourne midfield, I think the Bulldogs will be looking at this and saying, hey, if we can get on top and pick apart our targets inside 50, because I think the Bulldogs on paper probably have a bit more of that potent forward half, especially with Hugo Hagen and Aaron Norton, who I think can have sensational years, and Cody Waitman too. It's a forward line you can probably trust more than what the Demons do have at the moment. But hey, Cozzy Pickett does come back in. That will definitely help him, I think, as well. So I reckon the Bulldogs are a very good chance here. But I am pretty bullish on Melbourne bouncing back for this game. Still with a full-strength midfield with probably better conditions that suit them better. They're not too great, usually, in the dew and the wet. Um, I think they can get back on top um, of the midfield. And if they're just more clean with their forward half use, you know, Cozzy Pickett's coming back in so that will definitely help them you know inject a bit of pace and a bit of aggression and also a bit of class I think in their forward half um, and Fritsch was off the back of four goals too so I think he brings his shooting boots as well against the Bulldogs defense which is always questionable there is the side of the coin where I can really see the Bulldogs win this with yeah probably more of that potent forward half but yeah it's, it's hard for me to write off the D's from what I did see last week I reckon they will bounce back and knock off the Bulldogs here and win this game by 23 points. Second last game of the round, we see Port Adelaide open their season to the West Coast Eagles at Adelaide Oval. Right off the bat, it's going to be hard to see the Eagles win this game on paper against Port Adelaide, who are very, very tough to beat at home. From an Eagles point of view, for sure, they'll be wanting to string together more consistent four-quarter efforts. That was uh, definitely the polar opposite last year. Uh, they were sometimes able to win a quarter and then absolutely get smacked around the football. So Elliot Yo, Tim Kelly, Gimby, pretty sure is going to be in there. They're going to be key to really try and shake up that Port Adelaide midfield of Butters, Rosie, Horn, Francis, Wines looks to be good, and etc. I could definitely see West Coast potentially start this game well, or even win a quarter throughout the game, but it'd have to be quite extreme to tip against Port Adelaide at home, let's be honest. Uh, really strong midfield. I think their forward half with um, Toddy Marshall and Charlie Dixon and Jordi Arts will definitely be licking their lips, and they've um, recruited really well in the offseason too. I'm excited to see how, of course, Soto will go in the ruck. So Port at home, yeah, it's a pretty much a no-brainer tip, so the power to win well in the end by 44 points. Final game of the round, we close it off with the Dockers taking on the Brisbane Lions at Optus Stadium. Especially for Brisbane Lions fans, they'll know for sure this game is no gimme and no easy result as they only just beat Fremantle at this venue last year. So for me, Dockers opening the season, they're going to get a big home crown. I reckon they're a really good chance to try and knock off Brisbane here who look to be in their shells in that second half against Carlton. They really lacked the efficiency and just composure to finish that that game off well. They had more inside 50s yet still lost the game. So for Fremantle, they'll definitely be looking at that Lions offense thinking, well, if we're able to bring lots of manic pressure and also really forcing Brisbane's back half to make mistakes, really get them off the turnover like Carlton did last week. Usually when you have momentum in your favor, especially against Brisbane, they do struggle to sometimes swing back momentum in their favor. We've seen that with results in the past. So with the home field advantage, for me, the Dockers um, a really, really good chance here but again, the lack of data, we don't know how the Dockers could go. And, and the, on, on the other side of the coin, I just see Brisbane. I can't see him playing two bad games in a row here. I still think they've got a very mature side um, season with the likes of Lockie Neal and Dunkley. So I think they'll be bouncing back here um, and picking up a professional win away from home in a, in a tough place of Perth. Uh, it's hard to play the Dockers over there. So I reckon Fremantle will play some good quality footy here, but the Lions will be too good and win this one in the end by... 
tight game. I reckon this one will be close. We'll go the Lions by 16 points. So everyone, there are my tips for round one of the 2024 AFL season. There's going to be a lot of interesting games, I think, heading into this week for sure. Round one's always a bit of a hard one because we're yet to see these teams play. So there could be quite a bit of few upsets on the cards. Who knows? But yeah, there are my tips. Feel free to let me know your tips down below in the comments as well. Always love to hear your people's opinions. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.